So now the go ahead runs at second, the tying runs at third. Two balls and two strikes to Kipnis. And the pitch in the air to right field. Board just going back on it, reaches it, oh. and he needs to catch. When you're going good. When you're going good, you're going good. And the Phillies have now won five consecutive games at eight of nine. That'll make your heart move a little quicker. will be on the road for Mother's Day. So today is Stuff Hub Mother's Appreciation Day and also Weekends with Schmidt presented by Acme Markets. So all of the moms coming to the ballpark today, they are ripping open the Infinity Scarf and they're going to need it on a cool afternoon. Rain most of the day, but it looks like we're going to have baseball on time here at Citizens Bank Park. And last night, the Phillies wrapped up the month of April and did so with a very impressive 14 and 10 record. Now that also includes 12 games against the Mets and the Washington Nationals where the Phillies held their own. But the strikeouts continue to lead Major League Baseball and all of the other numbers are ahead of where the Phillies anticipated here in 2016. Hi everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Matt Stairs and Mike Schmidt. We'll get both of these guys' thoughts on this month of April and some of the surprises beyond the overall surprise of the team being 14 and 10, Mike. I guess individually there has to be some surprises that stand out. Well, I don't know if it's a surprise. Uh, when I got this assignment this morning, uh, I sat around for a couple hours going, who should it be? You know, <laughs> there's a lot of good things going on, but had to go with Odubel. Odubel Herrera. Um, First in uh, pitches seen this year, uh, second in walks, third in on base percentage. Gets a kick out of walking now and setting the table for the guys behind him. Uh, I just think he's got a lot of Pete Rose in him. I think he plays with that kind of fire. I think he's got a charismatic guy, you know, a lot of karma, good stuff. Plays the game hard, gets dirty. I think he fires the team up. Well, I, love, I think you got to love Oduba Herrera. So he's my guy for April. Well, a lot of people have talked about the pitcher batting eighth, how the Phillies' fortunes have changed since then, but it's really since he was in the leadoff spot. All right, so then you look to the bullpen, where there have been a couple of pleasant surprises for the Phillies. Well, there really has, and there's been a lot of good arms that come out of the bullpen, but for me, it's Hector Neris. Hector Neris is a guy who came into spring training. You weren't sure if he was going to make the team or not. He, he struggled with his command in spring training, and all of a sudden he came into the season and just started throwing fastballs in this nasty split finger fastball. You always look for a, 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 an offensive player to spark the offense. Well, honestly, I think that Naris has sparked the bullpen and everyone's just following his, his the way he is pitching right now. Well, he is the eighth inning guy, and Genmar Gomez has become the ninth inning guy. So the month of April, there was a lot of positives for the Phils. Now we begin the month of May, and we can see if the Phils can continue it. Vince Velasquez is off to a good start. He'll be opposed by Danny Salazar. Get ready for fastballs today, folks. We'll be back with the lineups and first pitch after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Toyota. Toyota's hybrid fleet is nothing short of a home run. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. By Citizens Bank. The next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at IBX.com.
get your uh, meal for the day or for the next couple of days because we got baseball coming at you here at Citizens Bank Park. Despite the rain that is in the area, the grass crew's done a great job of cleaning things up, and that youngster has done a great job <laughs> of covering up all plate. I think Cameron Rupp may have had something to do with that. I think so. Oh, man, that's hysterical. The starting nine <laughs> has been introduced, and he's doing his best Earl Weaver, Lou Pinella impersonation. There's Vince Velasquez heading out to the mound to make this start here this afternoon. He doesn't seem like he's rattled by anything. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Indians brought to you by Xfinity. The Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Ramirez, Kipnis, and Lindor, followed by Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, and Tyler Naquin. The bottom third of Rajay Davis, Lottie Chisenhall, and Danny Salazar. And they will face right-hander Vince Velasquez. He's 23 years old, and we have two guys today, Matt, that are going to fire the fastball. Velasquez, 3-1 and one with a 1.78 ERA. He's averaging more than a strikeout per inning pitched. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of fastball from Vince, and I think he's going to get out there to prove something that the last couple of games he hasn't been 100% sharp, but he's going to go out tonight. And you can see the scouting report on today's game, sorry, the four-pitch pitcher. I like the fact that he throws 14.6 pitches per inning. League is hitting zero versus his changeup. The curveball, 278, zero versus the slider and a very good average of 169 versus his fastball. Well, I'll tell you what, we are going to be about two minutes late from the original start time. That's pretty impressive considering the amount of rain that has fallen in the area the last several hours. He's done warming up. Walking to the plate is Jose Ramirez. So he's begin the month of May. Murph, it was an exceptional month of April for the Phils. It certainly was, Tom. It's been a while since the Phillies could say they could look back at an April and be uh, four games over 500. And, you know, it certainly is a, a young team that was hoping to get off to a good start. They talked about it in spring training. They talked about it at the beginning of the season. And there they did at 14 and 10. You take a look. Since 2011, back in 2011, 18 and 8 in the month of April. But since then, uh, only one year at 500. That was 2014, 13. And 13. So always good to get off to a good start, and especially for a young team who's just trying to find their way, gain their confidence. They're able to do that. Now we look ahead to the month of May. Yeah, Pete McCadden was saying just a couple of days ago that the uh, walk-off victory uh, by Ryan Howard, he said, and he's been around for a while, he said, this is the most excited I've seen these guys in more than two years. It's part of their development is figuring out how to win. So the fact that they're four over 500 is all part of that development. Ramirez takes outside so quickly it's three balls and no strikes to Jose Ramirez. Vince Velasquez who has a 16 strikeout game under his belt so far this season. And he delivers his first strike of the afternoon. Boy he's an athletic pitcher. I mean he's got a beautiful wind up real athletic move coordinated good timing. Walks the leadoff batter. So the Indians have a base runner to start the ball game. All right, guys, it's time now for our Nissan Keys to the game. Mike, we'll start off with you. Well, I'd like to see uh, our bullpen get a little rest. You know, last night they were short in the bullpen, and uh, Jamar Gomez had to pitch again last night and uh, got out of it with another save, eight for eight. It would be nice for us to get some runs early in the game, uh, put five, six, seven up there, and uh, give our bullpen a little rest. Yeah, and for me, a swing early versus Salazar, 90%, I'm sorry, 70% he throws fastball, and you do not want to get the two strikes because he has one of the best split fingers in fastballs. 0 0.043 average versus the split. Yeah, he's a good young pitcher. We have two very good young pitchers, one who is a little more seasoning than the other, that are throwing here this afternoon. Jason Kipnis is hit at nine straight. He's two for eight so far in this series. He thought he had uh, swung or connected well enough to give the Indians the lead last night in what turned out to be the last play of the game. As Ramirez draws another throw. It's a rough day to be facing a 95 mile an hour fastball. It sure Woo. is. If it's Man. well located, it sure is. <laughs> Playing with some raindrops uh, right now, but it's not raining hard at all. As Galvis is going to run in and talk to Velasquez just to kind of give him a beat. He'll touch the rosin up a little bit, clear his spikes from the clay. A savvy little move right there. You just come in, kind of break the momentum, uh, the negative momentum that he has going right now. And 
then when you're standing out in the infield like Freddie is now you hope man I hope that worked. <laughs> Inside it's two and oh. He just saw Corey Kluber out in the bullpen doing his bullpen work. The uh, mounds have been covered for most of the day. Adam Morgan threw his bullpen about 45 minutes before the start of the game. Well, the rain had subsided enough. That one's in there at 93. So just still getting loosened up a little bit. He hasn't hit 94, or 95, or 96 with these first few pitches. Chopper back towards second. That should be two. There's one. And there's two. Well, that'll relax you a little bit. Yes, it will. That's a nice little way to get back on track. And, and I kid you not, I was sitting there thinking to myself, you know, he's struggling with his offense. He's one pitch away, one good pitch away from getting a 4 6 3 double play and getting back in the rhythm. And that's the key right there is you don't get frustrated. It's a great pitch. It's a fastball low and away. You know, he, he tried to pull the ball. Where we saw it last inning against Gomez, he hit the ball to left center. He tries to pull that baseball. Thank you, 4 6 3 double play. Francisco Lindor is now the batter with the bases empty. Lindor hitting 293 overall. He is 3 for 9 in this series. And he takes a fastball Run. at 94, and it's 0 and 1. Amazing how that calmed him down. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It, it is. It's crazy. Out of play, and it's 0 and 2. Yes. Current te temperatures 51 degrees, light rain. Everybody that uh, ran the Broad Street run is uh, well, they're, they're recuperating now. Time to put the uh, ponchos on. First breaking ball of the day, it's 1 and 2. It's our fifth starter. Yeah, this is number five. <laughs> He's number five. I mean, technically, when you look at the uh, the paper. Down the left field line, that'll slice out of play over the tarp. And it remains one ball and two strikes. Comes back at Michael Franco. Plays it on the hop. You don't think pitching's important in this game? I'm going to tell you. Just a sense that you know that the guy on the mound is going to hold him for a while till you get a couple, you know, and then they're going. Then the bullpen's going to hold them and give you a chance to win. It's just amazing the importance of pitching. The Phillies have done a fantastic job of trading, getting big arms. We got some big ones in the minor leagues. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I guess that's the thing. If you think back to let's say even last year, nothing against those guys, nothing against Aaron Harang or Jerome Williams. There's a little different feel. With the starting pitchers this year compared to last year. And it's kind of what you were talking about. Like you kind of sense that they're going to keep you in the game. Over to first, that's another foul ball. The Phillies, when you look at the games they've played so far, they've had 15 games where they've either been tied or up or behind by one. I mean that's that's in the seventh inning from the seventh inning on 15 games. So they've been in just about everything. Hernandez just can't get to that one. It's hit sharply by Lindor. So a base hit with two men down. Sound like a broken bat. Man that was a seeing eye single. I don't know if uh, Ryan might have made a play for that ball. But that's. Manage as left handers. <laughs> no, there was no one holding anybody <laughs> on that there's particular no, there's one. No advantage there. <laughs> uh, you'll find an advantage anywhere, won't you? Well, that was a seven pitch at bat. I am not sure what Larry yeah. Vanover was looking in the dugout for. Well, no, uh, Francona was yelling something at. Oh, okay. At the umpire, I'm not sure what it was, obviously, but uh, they were having a little exchange. Terry Francona's team, 10 and 11 so far this year, minus five in the division. Five straight one-run one-run losses. Five straight one-run games. Wonder why he's not smiling down there. 
Toss over to first and the doors back without a tag. They've had 10 one run decisions this year. That's tied with Minnesota for the most already. That's in a month. Foul ball over the head of Ryan Howard. And it's no balls in one strike to Carlos Santana, the all time leader in home runs for a switch hitter for the Cleveland Indians. That's what he's done this year 240 with three homers and 11 RBIs. They got him from the Dodgers in the Casey Blake trade. It's turned out to be a good trade for the Indians for the long term. Casey Blake was a good player for the Dodgers for a couple of years at third base. So the, the second leading switch hitting catcher, is that what you said? He, he leads as a, as a switch hitting catcher? Switch hitter. A switch period. Hitter. Period. Period. Yeah. I thought Victor Martinez might be on that list. One ball and one strike. Breaking ball. Yeah, that's in there for a strike. It's one and two. Ooh. Uh, do you think he knows he's got a cup on his head? Or no? Absolutely not. No chance. That's on there good, too. It you can sure see the, is. You can see the gum in the back. Is that of what they're sticking on with gum? Yeah. <laughs> I used to use crazy glue, <laughs> it wasn't coming off. Another throw over, and the door is back. <laughs> there it is, right there. Pitch out, and it's two balls and two strikes. One thing that's so important that when, when you do a pitch out as a starting pitcher or a reliever is that you don't change your delivery. You know, you don't do a slide step pitch out because that'll shut down the running game. You continue doing your big leg kick and then do the pitch out. There goes Lindor and the pitch is popped up foul territory third base side Galvis a long run and he'll run out of room. There remains two balls and two strikes. Well this is a 21 pitch inning right now for Velasquez. He's got Jan Gomes on deck. Average inning is what 12 14 pitches somewhere in that range. I think I mean, a pitching coach average would, yeah I think a pitching coach would like you to be below 15 but I would say the average is not too far below that three and two so the door will be off and running. I think nowadays 15 pitches per inning is hard to do. Especially with leadoff hitters not being as, as aggressive as they used to be. Taking a lot of pitches. Hitters that throw extremely hard are throwing more off speed pitches, not trusting their fastball all the time early in the game. Carter goes again, and the pitch is pulled toward Howard, and he catches it in the air. And the side is retired. No runs, one hit, and one man left. Double play really helped Velasquez as we go to the bottom of the first here in Philly.
Bank Park on a cool wet day here in South Philadelphia. The Phillies coming to bat for the first time. Let's take a look at their lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. It'll be Herrera, Galvis, and Franco, followed by Ryan Howard over at first base, Cameron Ruff catching, and Darren Ruff in left field. The bottom third is Cesar Hernandez, Vince Velasquez, and Peter Borges. They will face 26-year-old right-hander Danny Salazar, who's had one game where the temperatures at game time were in the 70s, and that's because it was indoors in Tampa. But his other starts have been 39, 49, 49, and 51 degrees so far in 2016. But it has not discouraged his numbers. He's only allowed 11 hits, but he has walked 13. Yeah, he's walked 13, but he's expected with the guy. He's a very good arm. You see the scouting report. He's a four-pitch pitcher. He will top out at 96. He sits right around 94 miles an hour. He averages 17.9 pitches per inning. And I said earlier, he throws a lot of fastballs. 70% of the time, and he has a tremendous splitter, which he throws almost 20% of the time. He's got a little Jamie Moyer look going, too, with the uh, socks, the Sannies, and stirrups. Yeah, minus 30 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to be watching. It's not even noon out in Southern California. He's got too much going on. Odubel Herrera has 11 game hitting streak. He's at 313 overall with two homers and nine runs batted in. Inside, one ball and one strike. Yeah, the walks are probably the only thing that stand out from a negative for Salazar, but when somebody gets on base, the batting average against him is still rather low. Two balls and one strike. The numbers I like looking at versus a pitcher and as a hitter when you step in the batter's box whenever a pitcher like Salazar's fastball legs hit a buck 80 so you know he has good live movement on his fastball it's late movement and it probably throws a heavy baseball out towards center field on the run is Nate Quinn and he makes the catch one away well, he was playing awfully shallow wasn't he yeah but the ball's not traveling today it's <laughs> true. Freddy Galvis is coming up. Last night he was bringing the lumber. Brought to you by Yellowwood brand pressure treated pie. He was bringing it early in the first inning. It's on the board early in the game with a two run shot right there. His third of the season. It's a nice start to get up to two nothing. To Yellowwood bringing the lumber. He liked that one. He also liked the uh, little bloop he hit That's down right. the right he brought field that line. Lumber later in the game. Big uh, line drive down the right field. <laughs> Did you say he brought that lumber or he broke that lumber? He broke it. <laughs> I don't know if that was brand pressure treated pine right there. No balls at one strike to Galvis. Two for eight in the series. A pie, one and one. Both these guys, uh, Lasquez, Salazar, both have real athletic looking windups. You know what I mean? It's, uh, uh, both look like they're good athletes and play all, play other sports. Out of play down the left field line. It's one and two. Both have uh, have had Tommy John surgery during their careers uh, at a younger age. Salazar has not had the shoulder problems that Velasquez has had. But they're an example of having that surgery and then still being able to throw in the mid 90s. Because it hasn't slowed either one of them down. Think of those high tops, man. Well, I don't know, but I tell you what, as a hitter, that's the windup I like to see when I'm hitting, because everything is nice and smooth. It's not that herky jerky motion. No, no change. You know, exactly. stop, go. Uh, he comes back. Nice and the easy. wind up, yeah. yeah. Freddie Galvis got some uh, bumblebees in his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's something that uh, pitchers should utilize more. Um, it's like Cueto, I think, is the, is the pitcher I'm thinking of that has learned that turn his back to the pitcher wind up sometimes and throw over the top sometimes, a little sidearm sometimes, quick wind up sometimes. Burying that wind up used to, you know, drive me crazy. I would agree. Yeah, I don't think any, I don't think kids today are taught sort of that burying wind up. Yeah, you, I, you know, I mean, everybody says you got to pick up the target early and keep your eyes on the target all the time. Well, a lot of great pitchers. I mean, think of Luis Tiant. 
back in the day. Uh, turn his back to the hitter, only picked up the target as he was releasing the ball. One ball and two strikes to Galvis. So I get a miss. There's the split Matt was talking about. And there are two outs. That's the first strikeout for Salazar, 27th on the season. Yeah, that, that, that I can see what you're talking about, nasty pitch right there. Wow. You read fastball, you can see the split grip in his glove right there. And look at that ball drop. And I'll tell you what, if you, if there's a grip, if you swing big or take your eye off that ball and don't chase down to it with the contact, you're going to miss it. See Hedy's, Freddie's uh, head up in the air right there? Here's Michael Franco. And Franco pops it up foul over the first base dugout. It's 0 1. That last uh, side side view of a split finger shows you not a lot of movement and it just gradually drops. It's not one of those ones that comes in the table and just drops off the table. It just gradually goes in the feet. Like, and like Mike said, if you don't stand that ball as long as you can and you pull off a little bit, you're going to swing and miss every time. You almost have to swing at it like you're trying to foul it off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you, you're trying to spoil it. You don't see many, well, you hardly ever see a good. Splitter hit hard, right? Not very often. I mean, it has to be something that kind of hangs up in the middle of the play, waist high. I don't think Franco hurt himself. Well, I think he's uh, just upset with himself. Yeah, for for darn near letting that pitch hit him in the face. <laughs> you don't like when you open your body like that to the pitch. See, right there, right there. He was in a lot of pain too. Supposed to, you're actually supposed to take the pitch the exact opposite way, <laughs> turning your shoulder into the ball. Yeah, I think Borges did that the other night, Matt. You pointed that out the way Borges turned away. Yep. Two balls and two strikes to Franco with Howard waiting on deck here in the bottom of the first. Wow! Picks up another strikeout and he throws another split. Nothing yeah, across. That one really. Went. It sure did. Nothing across for the Phils. Two strikeouts for Salazar. We're on to the second inning and a scoreless game. The Indians and the Phils. Be Saturday, May 21st, when the Phillies take on the Atlanta Braves. That's a 305 first pitch, and the Fanatics Children's Book is free to fans 14 and under. Philly Fanatic and the Galapagos Gang. Tickets can be purchased now by going to Phillies.com. Mike, you have that hanging up in your uh, your Ooh. den somewhere? It's a nice photo. That's lifted out toward first base. Ryan Howard is under it, makes the catch. No, I don't, One actually. Um, there you go. Let me see. Is that in the uh, memorabilia store? Uh, yes, it is. You got some good looking hair going there, Mike. 
Matt, we have hair envy. That was a uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good locks going there, huh? How many years ago was that? Five, know, probably somewhere around. Five. <laughs> <laughs> probably somewhere around 80. 1980. Shot with you with that beard. Before you guys were born. That's right. What a way! And here's uh, Tyler Naquin. Naquin's shown a pretty good swing so far in this series in his five at bats. We're all hitting 341, no homers and two runs batted in. Ninety-four, that overpowered him. It's 0 and 2. Wanted that pitch up. It seemed like he uh, he threw some affirmation out toward Velasquez. He liked whatever he threw. He, he, yeah, he did. And, and, but the difference was it was a 91 mile an hour fastball instead of being that 95, 96 at the top of the zone. I always wonder about that. I mean, what there? It's a trend has been, I guess, for the last 10 years that I've noticed from all my TV watching. The need on a no two pitch to have to waste a pitch. Back toward the middle. Galvis has it. Pirouette throws to first and it's wide. And they quit as a board with the second hit for the Indians. Yeah, that was kind of in no man's land right there. Uh, kind of a token throw to first base. Well, Rajay Davis will be the batter. See, so you don't think there should be a waste well, of a no two pitch? <laughs> Couple schools of thought on that, uh, depending on the time of the game, uh, the situation in the game, obviously the hitter. But I mean, there's so many catchers that like to put that glove up high, you know, give me a high fastball like this. Let's just waste one up here. And when 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 the pitcher throws a high fastball, I mean, it does. It, to me, what does it, what what good does it do? The the fastball is not anywhere near the hitter, right? I mean, he, he doesn't feel it go by, or it's it's just unhittable out of the pitcher's hand. Just like throwing a pitch, a high fastball, just for the sake of throwing. I, I mean, did, I don't think they think the batter's going to swing at that pitch, do they? When he puts that glove up there, I don't think that high. You know, the one that I guess it was the second fastball up. I guess if it was in the neighborhood, maybe. Well, the, the thing they say is they want an 0-2 pitch. You want to change the eye of a hitter, the eye level. You want to get his eyes up in the zone while. Aren't you taught to look always down the zone? I you mean, can, you can watch a pitch go over your head or behind your head. Doesn't mean you're going to swing at the next one up there. Swing and a miss. One ball, no, one strike. The, the, the old, the O2 pitch, to me, is not as. For me, the one-two pitch was the tough one because he's gen they generally already. It's almost like. You almost know you're not going to have to swing 0-2. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, there's a pattern where you and, and a lot of times why the 0-2 pitch when it's a bad pitch gets hit so well is because the batter is in more of a it's probably going to waste one kind of a, a an approach to that pitch and then boom it puts you in more of a let the ball get up there let it get on you um, kind of a short and quick approach. And that's why you hit the bad 0 2 pitches so well. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're almost not really, you're not over aggressive. You're not really thinking about having to hit. Now, so you get to the 1 2 pitch. Now you start to think, well, you know, he might. I got to be ready now. I, I don't know whether that mindset makes any sense to you guys or not, but to me, the 1 2 pitch was a lot tougher than the 0 2 pitch. When they threw that high fastball, yeah, Jesus, like giving me a pitch. It's a ball out of his hands. Exactly. But now, if he threw it in a better spot, not all the way up, but I think you ought to try to strike the guy out with something 0 2 all the time. Save yourself a couple of pitches. One ball and two strikes to Davis. And Davis pops it up foul over the screen out of play. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, Milwaukee leads Miami 2 to 1. Domingo Santana did not hit a home run as far as Giancarlo Stanton, but. He did hit a homer. 
Miami is looking for its first eight game winning streak in the last eight games. The East is playing well. Huh. Aside from the Braves. Four of the five teams are playing good baseball. Yeah we make a little trip into Miami right. Yep. Next weekend. Swing and a miss. A 93 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. First strikeout for Velasquez. And one away. Or excuse me two away. This is what you call the emergency swing. It's almost like you're sitting on an off speed. And then next thing you know you get that high fastball and you kind of react to it. That pitch just felt like his hardest pitch of the game even though it was 93 on the board. Just it just. I don't know. It took off. So hard. Yeah. Lottie Chisenhall who had three hits in yesterday's ball game. He came in with just two hits in 17 at bats. He had three yesterday. Takes a breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. According to Larry Banover, the home plate umpire. Indians will head home. They've been on a long road trip. The Phillies will head out on a long road trip. That will begin with four games in St. Louis, then three in Miami, and then three in Atlanta. One's way inside, one ball, one strike. You always know you go on a long road trip when you have a day off during the road trip. Yeah. That's great because you're know, playing about 36 holes of golf. Yeah, but you guys got your tee times, right? We have a couple of them. We haven't worked out Monday yet, the off day. Two balls and one strike. And that, that off day is in Miami? It's in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. yeah. Augusta? Well, <laughs> I'm waiting for you to make that phone call. Somebody for us. other than us would have to call. <laughs> There's a fly ball out to left center field. Oduble will trek into the alleyway and put it away. Side is retired. No runs, one hit, an infield hit. And one man left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning. Get some time to get some cheese steaks, some sausage and peppers. You're ready to go. And highlights from this series against the Indians on Breakfast on Broad. Rob Ellis, Julian Mealy, Sarah Baker, and Barrett Brooks. Weekday mornings on TCN, the Comcast Network. Bottom of the second inning. Ryan Howard will lead it off. Howard three for nine in this series. All three hits came in the first game. Overall hitting 203 with five home runs and 10 runs batted in. So we're going to miss the first one. It'll be Howard, Rupp, and Ruff.
one and one. Salazar last year, 14 wins, an ERA of 3.45. I always look at the American League ERAs. You got an ERA of 3.45. I think you're sitting pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty good for the American Especially League. Especially in that division. 195 strikeouts and 185 innings pitched. And he's got that pitch working here today. And it's sat at 84 85. First one was 84 the split, then 85, and that one was at 85. So three strikeouts. It's nasty. Yeah, I like, you know, I mean, that, that's what I was talking about. A lot of guys will throw you that high fastball, just go to one and two, and then try to strike the batter out. He went right to it. Yeah, I don't see these free passes that they talked about with him, all these walks that he's allowed. <laughs> he looks like he's right around the strike zone. Well, he's getting ahead and he's got. Good confidence in that split right now. Cameron Rupp, 0 for 4 so far in the series. Salazar's about to throw a fastball to the outer edge and it comes inside. It's 1 0. Matt, this is where you get on that early fastball, right? Well, <laughs> you don't get to two strikes with that split. That's, that's why with the uh, Nissan keys to the game, that's, that's what, uh, you, <laughs> you have to swing early. You really do. You need to stay away from it. Like yesterday. You change your game plan. Breaking ball and it's 1 and 1. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Bob Beaton of Vineland. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, then Bob will win $100. Fastball. One and two. Well, you can see uh, with these three starters, the Indians have run out there against us. They're pretty impressive, actually. Pretty, three pretty good arms. I don't know who the fourth and fifth guys are, but wow. And they don't have Carlos Carrasco, the former Phil uh, farmhand, who is out with a hamstring injury. Bauer took his place in the rotation last night. Cameron got lucky right there. Sure did. Yeah, that was a, that was a strike. <laughs> I think it's the way the catcher caught it, the reason why he didn't punch him out with the uh, fourth consecutive strikeout. There you go. That is uh, the fourth consecutive strikeout. I mean, that was a splitter that was up and hittable. Got hit the other way, but I think he pulled off that ball a little bit. But uh, now that was a splitter he wasn't, probably wasn't too happy with. Right in the middle of the play, right? Yep. Cameron kind of pulled his left shoulder out. Saw his finish there looking toward third base. Here's Darren Ruff. There it's average at 206 with no homers and three RBIs. The Phillies are currently 12th in the league at hitting at 231. 14th in runs scored, which is why the 14 and 10 record is uh, even better to look at, considering they they haven't really scored a whole lot of runs. Now they've been better lately. One ball and one strike. Cameron had a couple good at bats last night. That was good to see. Pete getting him in there to see if he can't get him back on track. He also made a heck of a catch out in left field. Yes, he did. You know, Darren is an athletic kid. I think if you ask him, he feels first base is his best position, but I think he's pretty confident that he can play the outfield. Well, I'd love to see him get on a roll and get uh, earn, earn himself a spot in that everyday lineup. So we get a miss and he just struck out the side. So that's five strikeouts for Salazar through the first two innings here this afternoon. We're going to go to the third inning. Maybe that little guy will go to his seats for an inning or so. I don't know. He looks pretty content rolling along the concourse. <laughs>
Indians nothing the Phillies nothing we move to the top of the third inning both of these teams are going to have a tough time today hitting the uh, the opposition starter the way it looks uh, so far Salazar is going to lead it off it'll be Salazar Ramirez and Kipnis Danny Salazar is 0 for 9 in his major league career with nine strikeouts he does not have any sacrifice bunts and the first pitch is outside of 20 0. He looks like he's ready to hit. Well, at least he didn't strike out. Ryan Howard has room, as he was told. And one away. <laughs> Time now for the Jeep Stuff the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, guys, the question is who are the only two Indians to hit 50 or more home runs in one season? 50 or more home runs in one season. Answer will be revealed a little later on. Jose Ramirez walked his first time up. Takes a fastball at the knees. There's 95. I'm going to go back and, with, uh, and talk about that Salazar at bat. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm anxious to hear this. Well, I, I don't understand it. If you've punched out every time so far and the pitcher starts you off with the ball, why do you swing the next pitch? I you, you, think you're guaranteed to see now four pitches. Yeah. You're making the pitcher work. Whatever happened in the game nowadays where the pitchers are taught to take a strike. Unless you're a good hitting pitcher. All right, let me try to answer that. Okay. <laughs> First, they don't want him on the bases to have to run and get tired. So why would he swing? <laughs> Figuring he's making out and he won't hit the ball. So then, wouldn't you want him to take four pitches and strike out instead of two? That's pitches? one way to look at it. Um, that was the theory he had in his previous nine at bats. He was 0 for nine with nine <laughs> How about this? How about this? He was due. Mm. Do whatever. I'm due to win the lottery. That's not going to happen. Well, Matt, if you are, the Powerball is over $48 million. Dollars. <laughs> Three two pitch coming to Ramirez. Outside ball four, so he walks for the second time. Powerball is uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, $348 million. And the Mega Millions is Tuesday, Tuesdays and Fridays. That's $128 million. I win that one. We're going to Augusta because I'm going to well, buy the course. <laughs> <laughs> All we'd have if we won on this one, that would be headaches. You think so? What a, yeah. What, well, a, what a great headache it would I'll be. Take, I'll take Tylenol every day if I win it. Here's Kipnis <laughs> hit it to a 4 6 3 double play his first time up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you're going to have to worry about it. Who who gets the, the seats on your jet, right? I mean, who helicopter, Mike? We're gonna get a helicopter. It's more affordable. That's you'd have so many friends you wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> more affordable. <laughs> Very reasonable. Kipnis takes a change up low. It's one ball and no strikes. But just think you, that, yeah, that, you better. that power ball is that much? <laughs> That's not even close to how much A Rod has made in two years of this contract. Not worried about A Rod. Not worried hope about Bernie him. and Hillary don't get elected if you win this. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> One ball and no strikes to Kipnis. On the outside quarter, it's one and one. Kipnis uh, and the rest of the Indians are a very patient group. They'll make a pitcher work. I mean, that's the American League style. But they, as a team, average about four pitches per plate appearance. That's good. That's very good. Mm. Would have been higher if Sal Salazar didn't swing at the second pitch. <laughs> you know he was due. That was a pretty good pitch there by Velasquez. Two balls and one strike. Runner goes and stops, and the pitch is low. It's three and one. I think that uh, uh, Ramirez just uh, 
lost his footing over at first base. The old fake steal. There's a good chance Ramirez will be on the move here. Three one fastball coming getting us controls the bat well. On the outside corner three and two. Yeah that's one that back in the day wasn't taken very often. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw to second base, nice and easy for Cameron Rupp. <laughs> Freddie Galvis made it a little more difficult with that little hurdle, but it's a strikeout throw out double play. Second double play of the game for the Phils. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Score this game. Velasquez and Peter Borges. Well, cricket, something to smile about. The Galapagos gang will always make you smile around the ballpark. Iggy just ate that young girl's hat. And Here she's it comes. Here pushing. it comes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. Should I put it back on? Bessie, the uh, blue footed uh, booby, is out with Calvin. Well, we want smiles and we got them. Cesar Hernandez will take outside one ball and no strikes. Cesar 0 for 5 in this series is average at 275. Corners are pinched in thinking he might bunt. I think early in the count this is a guy though that Cesar would like to hit against. He's such a true fastball hitter. So the fact that the third baseman Ramirez is still in on the grass is a little surprising. Outside two and one. Well and even since the third baseman is playing in. A few days down the good bunt he's going to beat it out anyway. And we saw the speed this year with Cesar. Especially with the play he made yesterday at second base of that uh, very nice catch down right field line. He is quick. The Hyundai defensive player of the game. Yeah. Off the mask of Jan Gomes. Rates picked up just a little bit here in Philly. There's going there are going to be showers for the rest of the day. It's just the way it's going to be. Play. How those folks ran the Broad Street run today in this. I don't know if this bothers them or not, but more power to them. I forgot about that today. The traffic was yeah. crazy. 
It's a well attended event. Cesar spoils it. You stand at the Navy Yard and man, it was packed yeah. around there. School buses everywhere. Security. Everybody had a poncho on. Popped it up third base side into foul territory is Ramirez. And he makes the catch for the first out. Phillies baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE since 2015. Buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Delval Honda dealer. Or visit DelvalHondaDealers.com. And buy WV Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy rights. It's a day to maybe pop up to the concourse to stay a little dry. That young lady wearing the uh, infinity scarf that was given out. It's Velasquez takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. Velasquez one for eight so far in his big league career. Side one and two. Indians will return home. They have an off day tomorrow. Then they take on the Tigers. The Tigers are in second place in the Central. That's a pretty good division right now, the way it's working out. The two time defending uh, American League champions, the Kansas City Royals, are currently in third. Four games behind the White Sox, who are sitting atop the division. It was funny after the uh, Adam LaRoche issue with in spring training with the son not being able to come to the ballpark and yada yada whatever. They thought, wow, it's going to tear the team apart. Looks like it came closer. It does. Rollins has helped and yep. Frazier has helped on the left side. Brett Laurie's helped. On the right side. On the right now side. Now playing second base. Yep. Yeah, quite as is kept. Uh, Velasquez has worked it back to 3 2 here. Seeing all the pitches. 3 2 pitch coming. Oh, Look at oh, that. Four. Eagle on. Look at that. First walk of the day. First base runner for the Phillies. So Salazar will work from the stretch. Boy, that's a awfully close pitch. <laughs> I know. I don't know how umpires do it. I really don't. How, how they can differentiate in that little small. Well, Look at that. That's a Ooh. strike. That's, that's absolutely a strike. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to the other players. Pitchers. Game's changed, Mike. <laughs> they don't understand. Don't even look at them. Mind regular players, position players talking to each other, but man, one of my pitchers, my pitchers would not be chatting it up with the other hitters. Really? I absolutely not. The old Bob Gibson theory. Oh yeah. You don't ever pitcher. You don't ever want your pitchers to give off the air of friendliness. You know. Keep those hitters wondering where the heck you're coming from. <laughs> Balls and one strike to Borges. Well, today it's uh, I guess it's a little different. Oh, you, you mean in the rain, <laughs> or, or or do you mean in today's I, game? I think today's game it's just a little different. Well, it's popped up foul off to the right out of play, and it evens the count up at two and two. I tell you, I've never. I look back at my career. I, don't, I, I know every pitcher on another team that I knew well and I considered a friend. I hit well because you were comfortable with exactly. that. Exactly. 
I mean, they didn't throw one up up in there every now and then. The Sutcliffe is a good example. We were very good friends, and he, you know, throw one up around my forehead every now and then. See now, I, I can't see him not having a conversation with somebody over at first base. The oh, Rick Sutcliffe, Sutcliffe would of today. Need, uh, today, maybe, but well, he, yeah, not when he was a player. No, no, no. He he was old school. He was. Uh, don't show him up. Don't you know? You, you flip your bat or uh, do something off color on the field. You're getting hit. Ward just rips it down the left field line. That'll be in for a hit. Velasquez will hold up at second. Davis, for one reason or another, was shaded that way and is able to get to it easily. The first hit of the day for the Phils. And that puts runners on first and second. On Saturday, May 14th, when the Phillies take on the Cincinnati Reds, all fans coming to the ballpark will receive that cap right there. It's compliments of Teva. It's Teva Respiratory Night here at Citizens Bank Park. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. It's a nice hat. It's a sharp hat. Cool, cool color. Yep. Phillies gave up that hat on opening day, the red hat. Now they follow it up with the blue with the red. All right, so Salazar has a couple of base runners for the first time after retiring the first seven hitters that he faced. The close walk to Velasquez put him into the stretch. And now Odubel Herrera, who flied out to center his first time up, has a chance to give the Phils the lead. First pitch is way upstairs. It's one ball and no strikes. Odubel has uh, several streaks that are currently going. So yes, he's he reached base safely, 21 straight games. He has an 11 game hitting streak. And he has scored a run in seven consecutive games. So that's a lot of responsibility to maintain those streaks as this day moves on. Just hit a home run. He would, <laughs> he would take care of all of it. <laughs> He's on par for um, 100 runs scored, correct? He is. 100 walks. I don't think we'll make 100 walks, but I'll tell you what, if we got to 70, you're talking league, league leader and hitting. Second out. And back to second base goes Velasquez. Back to first goes Borges. Two outs. Freddie Galvis is coming up. What do you think, Matt? Those balls, uh, when he flies out to left field like that, a plane issue or just being laid or his ball gets I, a little I, deep on him? No, I think it's, with, especially with Herrera, it's the, uh, the, the pull off a little bit, barrel drops. And just clips it to left field. Instead of taking that nice downward swing we always talk about and driving it that way. That happens with anyone who hits a weak fly ball to left field. Or to right field. Fastball down, one Salazar. ball, one strike. Sorry, Tom. Salazar got a like it's a it's an easy delivery, and then it's a dart. Like it gets on you quick. You can tell by that take with Freddie, the ball was in the glove, and, and Freddie's foot was just getting down. And Freddie's going with the, the little double toe tap with the front foot. It's such an it's so important realizing when you do the double toe tap that first tap has to be so soon because if you get caught in the middle of going from number one to number two with a toe tap you're in trouble. 
The only way you can hit a baseball is that front shoulder has to fly out and you got to cheat. Broken back. Base hit it to center field. Velasquez will score. Going to third is Borges. The Phillies take the lead. It's a one nothing ball game. Well, I was watching the double toe tap, and he got it done early. He did. <laughs> he did. Good point, Matt. The walk to Velasquez ends up scoring the first run after an 0-2 count. He works a walk, and Galvis, boom, toe tap, toe tap. Yeah, we were a little uppercut there, but it was a line drive. Because it was off to the right a little bit, Velasquez had no trouble scoring. So first and third, and now Michael Franco is the batter. Phillies lead it one nothing here in the bottom of the third. I thought Juan was going to send Borges. Did you? He thought about it. As it turned out, he may have been able to score because the throw went over the head of the cutoff man. Yep. And Juan's a very good third base coach, and he was watching the play. And if there was any bobble in the outfield, he was ready to send them. Once he picked it up cleanly and threw it in, that's when it puts the pressure on that third base coach to say, "Okay, put the brakes on." Hmm. Having trouble with which is yes he everybody is. is but having trouble with that split and recognizing well, the split. he's pulling off the ball big time right yeah. now he has a, a, you know a, an important adjustment to make and make as quick as he can make right now and I don't know what it takes but some guys have tried to hit the ball to right field uh, hit it at the first baseman allow themselves to get jammed but he's got to figure out a way to get that left shoulder back into the hitting area. If I'm Freddie Galvis at first base, I'm stealing right now. No balls, two strikes that came out to give the signs, which basically telling you we're going to eat it. We're not throwing it through. We're not going to give up a run 0 2. I, I don't disagree with you, but the, the other school of thought would be this is your best hitter, technically, your best run producer. Doesn't look like it right now. <laughs> a couple of pitches, but uh, we've seen him make adjustments on the fly. You know, with two men on, do you want to run yourself out of an inning with your three-hole hitter at the plate? No, you don't. But I mean, I, I'm honestly thinking, oh, two, they're not going to throw through. Well, he was going to go, and then he stops. You know, because I because I watched the out, I watched the. Well, shortstop so far on the pull side, he has no opportunity to get there. But you know, if you watch getting us at second base, usually guys that are covering second base on a steal cheat a little bit. After the pitch is thrown, they'll start moving towards second base, one to cover up on a delayed steal and to back up throw right. the pitcher. He's, he's just staying put, which tells me that there's no way they want to throw through, especially with Peter Borges' speed up at third base and allow a run that way. Oh, that's a ball. So the run will score. Dallas will go to second. It's two nothing. Phillies on top. Well, how often do you see you that? Just don't see it every day. No. Oh my God. Spike caught on the rubber or uh, somewhere. We'll get a look at it. I'm sure. No, his back foot slips. Yeah, yeah, back foot slips, felt uncomfortable. He, you know, you should just go ahead and fling it up there, right? If you have to roll it roll up. Roll it in there. Yeah, but it takes 13 hops to get to Whatever. the <laughs> Well, it's a break for the Phils. As we said, it's been raining most of the day here, and it's been raining most of the game, very light. So it is a little slick out there. Two balls and two strikes to Franco. And he pops it up foul. It'll be out of play into the Diamond Club. Looks like a slider kind of hanging up there to hit right there. That 
one popped up in front of home plate. The third baseman Ramirez says he has it and he makes the catch and the side is retired. Two run score though for the Phils. It's a 33 pitch inning. Two hits allowed. The balk was huge. And the Phillies leave one in scoring position. They'll take a 2 0 lead into the fourth. Let's go places. Let's go Phillies. Crowd's crew just made sure that they uh, manicured the infield. Mostly uh, bag level. Nothing inside the bag. As we go to the top of the fourth inning. Francisco Lindor. He singled his first time up. And he will lead it off. It'll be Lindor, Santana, and Jan Gomes. Three, four, and five. It's our first time seeing Lindor. He's a very good shortstop. He moves extremely well at shortstop. The runner up to the rookie of the year last year in the American League. Behind another shortstop, Carlos Correa. Down low, 2 0. Well, it's important right now for Velasquez to come out and shut them down. Yep. And a two run lead against a tough pitcher. And now 3 0. If you watch Lindor hit, he has a very simple. I love where his hands are; they're low. And all of a sudden, he just picks his hands up. It goes back. That's the load we talk about: getting your hands back in a power position. So they're low, so he can get then get them back. Right. I mean, a lot of guys have their hands up high, and you can't get your hands there. Good adjustment. So a leadoff walk before the ball game today. <laughs> Kathy Rupp. Cameron's mom was uh, asked to throw out the first pitch to her son in his rightful spot behind the play. Phillies always bring in a mom. They have a drawing. They bring in a mom each and every Mother's Day. They bring in a dad as well. And Cameron's mom was uh, able to come into town. And she also gets the honor of sitting down and chatting with Greg Murphy. Murphy. <laughs> yes, she does. And uh, in the honor of throwing the first pitch, as you just said, uh, welcome, Kathy. Welcome to Philadelphia. Happy Mother's Appreciation Day to you and to your family. Uh, you get the whole family here. Uh, a pretty special uh, thing for you to be able to represent all the moms of the players, I would imagine. Yes, very special. And I remember when they get, I got the call and I was at war. And I walked in the back room to listen to the message. I was jumping up and down. I was so excited. And I'm sure Cameron was uh, equally excited when he heard that you guys were all coming. Yes, he was. Although they did ask him 
uh, before they called me, they asked if he had a good relationship with his mother. Thank goodness he said yes. <laughs> well, I guess you have to ask the question, but it's good that you're here and that the answer was yes. Uh, your whole family's here. Your husband, Kevin, right in front of us, and your son, Clint, and your daughter, Carly, as well, and Cameron being the oldest of the three. So you're kind of celebrating Mother's Day a week early with the family. I know you all went out last night and had a nice night after the game, but, but not too late. Why is that? No, well, we were out to about midnight, but Cameron wanted us to come back to his uh, apartment, and I told him I couldn't because I was pitching the next day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. You have to get your rest when you're making the start. I, I like that. You know, it, it's it's so great every year when we get a chance to talk to uh, the moms and, and the dads on Father's Day about uh, their relationship with their sons. And I, I know you guys were here when uh, when Cam made his, his debut, and it, it's, it seems like so long ago at this point, but uh, I would imagine just uh, each and every time you see him out there on the field, it's pretty special. It is, and Kevin and I talk sometimes, and we just still like, can you believe it? We have a son in the big leagues. It, it, every day we think about that, and it's, it's a blessing. We know it could be taken away, you know, tomorrow, so we're very blessed that he's healthy. Can you give us uh, a little insight into what uh, raising Cameron Rupp was like? Was he a tough kid to, to deal with? No, he wasn't. I will say this. I always refer to him as my happy baby. He was happy all the time. He never told me no. Whatever I asked him to do, he always said, okay, mama, okay. Now, he didn't always do it, but he always told me yes. The only thing I can ever say I had any struggle with him was in doing homework. That, that was not his deal, and he found no need for it because he knew he was going to be a professional baseball player. Yeah, but sometimes you just got to make him do it anyway, right? That is the way. Well, uh, on behalf of the Phillies organization, and uh, I, I don't have to tell you how much we enjoy being around your son. He's one, he's one of the real good guys at baseball, and, and we certainly do enjoy it. I am going to, for now on, call him Happy Baby, if that's okay. <laughs> if that's okay. Well, actually, probably only do that once. I would say that, yeah, <laughs> once. <laughs> but, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for being with us, and enjoy your time in Philly. Thank you, and thank you all so much. You got it. Guys, let's send it back to you. Murph, when you do call him happy baby, we have to put a camera on you. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and my running shoes. And your running that shoes, that's it. <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> very, very sweet lady, it sounds like. Yeah, they, they're See that's, where he gets his uh, demeanor from. Yeah, they're, they're a great family. Well, Velasquez has walked the last two batters, and uh, after that, the home plate umpire. Larry Vanover said, hey, we got to get a little diamond dry down around home plate and around the mound. So they're working on the mound. We saw Santana slip in the previous inning, and that turned out to be a balk. Bob McClure went out to chat with Velasquez. I do believe that counts as a trip. I mean, not that it really matters at this point, because we're only in the fourth inning, but I do believe that counts as a trip. That wasn't something that he was uh, checking on. Phillies family packs are available for select weekend home games. Four tickets, four hot dogs, and four Coca-Colas for $100. For more information and to order, visit the ticket section at phillies.com. Put the uh, tarp on the field, on the uh, bullpen mound as well. All right, so Jan Gomes is the batter with two on. Four walks this afternoon for Velasquez. Four walks and two strikeouts so far. Had a fastball in there. It's 0 and 1. Yep, just needed some diamond drive. That's dry. it. That's <laughs> all he needed. Gomes popped out to Ryan Howard his first time up. That was in foul territory. In the dirt. Good job by Cameron. He needs one of those double play balls that he got in the first inning right here. Cameron shaking his head yes. Um, meaning that. I agree with you. The ball was a little low. <laughs> or he's having a conversation with him and he's uh, trying to sell it a little differently. A high pop up on the infield.
Franco the third baseman in foul territory now in fair territory. The infield fly rule was called so the batter was automatically out if it was a fair ball. And that turned out to be a pretty hard dip, hard play right there. Those two guys they have some fun don't they. Yeah they the do. Not a lot of pressure on that catch there Mikhail. Batters out no matter what right. That's right. <laughs> Well, we've seen that a couple times this year. I mean, where the runners have run. We've seen it. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, you're not really. You don't really <laughs> think about that when the ball's up in the air, though. By the way, it is raining in your eyes while it today, while you're looking out. You need a little uh, windshield wipers on your eyes. We get a miss and it's 0 and 1. Nate Quinn reached on an infield hit his first time up. The grounder back through the middle. I find it interesting that Vince's fastball is, is ranging from 90 to 95. Pretty consistent 91, 92. But when he needs that extra oomph on the fastball, he'll hit 95. That game he struck out 16, Tom, didn't he? He was at 95, 96 the whole, the whole day, game, yeah. But it was warmer that day. Sometimes power pitchers take a little longer to get loose, especially in cooler weather. No balls and two strikes. That was in the left hander happy zone. It's the uh oh zone. Oh, no zone. <laughs> A little different though when you have that uh, 94 mile an hour fastball down in that zone compared to a, a breaking ball or a changeup. Those are the ones that usually get rocketed out of the ballpark down in the uh, oh no zone. Swing and a miss. He got it with a high fastball. Two outs, three strikeouts for Velasquez. Pitch back through this 94 miles an hour elevated it. You know, last time Naquin was up, that's where they wanted those pitches, yep. and they weren't in that spot. So two outs, and here is Davis. He struck out his first time up. Rajay Davis. One for seven in the series. Runners on first and second. Back to back walks to begin the inning for Velasquez. And a line drive out toward left field. Darren Ruff makes the diving grab. He is fleet footed enough to play out there, right? How about that catch by Darren Ruff? He just saved a run, possibly two. Definitely two. And the side is retired. Well, he's made two very good plays in this series. This wow. one was a big one. Yeah, that ball's tagged. Uh, we probably see that on another. Network tonight. <laughs> Great concentration. Web gem.
Harold Art from uh, Doylestown, who was at his first Phillies game here at Citizens Bank Park. Now, he's been to Phillies games before at the Vet and Connie Mack, but this is the first time he's been here, so he gets a certificate, July 17, 2015, and he got a chance to see a, a wonderful play by Darren Ruff to wrap up the top of the fourth inning. And now we go to the bottom of the fourth and a breaking ball to Howard, and it's 1 0. Howard struck out his first time up. Up high, 2 0. Howard pounds that yeah, front leg. That's a good one to lay off of. I mean, he, he doesn't like jumping at the ball like that. It's not a good feeling. Uh, but if you can lay off that high fastball and get yourself something a little down around the knees where he likes it. That's a little better spot there, yes, sir. Howard had a big night in game one of this series. His game winner. Sent everybody home happy. He also had a couple good at bats before that. Well, He's got a couple good pitches to hit in this at bat. Just missed him, and it's two and two. It just shows you how hard this game is to stay locked in. First night, he three knocks. Last night, he punches out three times. The game is hard to figure out. When you feel good, then you can lose it within a day. 94 mile an hour fastball, strikeout number six for Salazar. And that'll bring Cameron Rupp to the plate. This is a heck of a play to wrap up the top of the fourth inning. Well, it's a heck of a play because one, as, as an outfielder, especially a left fielder, where I think it's the hardest place to play, that ball is hit off towards the end of the bat, plus it's hooked a little bit. It's the matter of getting a tremendous jump and going over and making a Superman catch with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> that must be the way you do it. It's Velasquez liked it. He sure did. Cameron Rupp was jammed on that pitch. And he's retired 6 3. So two outs, two quick outs now. And here comes Darren Ruff. Well, let's see if he can ride the momentum of a great defensive play. Darren struck out his first time up. Balls and no strikes. This guy's got good stuff. Got very good stuff. Got a good slider. I love his split, of course, but it, it, it shows how important it is that even the guys have great stuff to be able to throw the first pitch strike. Yeah. The walk to Velasquez, the last inning with one man down, was as big of an at bat as you're going to see in a game. The Phillies went on to score two in the inning. Thought he had him struck out. Yeah, that walk in the Peter Borges had a very good at bat, hitting a line drive to left field. Chopper back over the mound, right at Kipnis. And this side is retired. 4 3 in the put out. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. Four in the books. The Phillies lead the Indians 2 0.
the precision play of the game. We've had a couple of double plays today, including the strikeout throwout double play. Yeah, this is very nice. Getting us with a 3 2 pitch strike out. Cameron throwing about 104 exit velocity to second base <laughs> for the ending double play. See, you're buying into those numbers, Matt. Just having fun with it. Those next generation statistics. People are going to start calling you a guru. <laughs> Here's Lonnie Chisenhall. who fly to center his first time up. On the outside Hard. corner, one ball, one strike. One and two. Cameron did not even move his glove. Not an inch. Gave that target early. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, they are playing in Chicago, where the Braves lead the Cubs 3-0. Jace Peterson, a sacrifice fly. Those are that's a, a tale of two different teams right there. Chicago with 17 wins, the Braves with 18 losses, and Velasquez with his fourth strikeout. Wow, that ball's hopping right now. Haven't seen anybody hit a high fastball. Man, the whole thing changes when you get up in the 94, 95 you're range, right, doesn't it? You're right, it does. Crazy. Look how, look how late he was in that high fastball. Yeah. That was really late. Yeah. Salazar takes strike one. He popped out his first time up. He, I, I would he, assume he's that, due. Yeah, he's due for another punch out. <laughs> but I, I would assume that Salazar hasn't swung the bat, but maybe a couple of days ago to get ready for this game. Absolutely. Five strikeouts for Velasquez. Two outs. You, you know, we had a little exchange before the game started today. Tommy and I, we were, and I just happened to mention it, how unfair I thought it was for the American League teams to come into the National League ballpark with the, uh, you know, having to use the pitcher as a hitter in the lineup. And you see the, the difference it makes in a lineup. Like, I mean, this inning right here, you, you get the eighth hole hitter and you got a guy that's never hit in his, you know, since high school. <laughs> Coming up to hit, and then basically you got yourself two outs. It's a free out three times a game. Yeah, and we didn't extend the conversation. Uh, what I was going to ask you, I'll, I'll ask you now. Would you prefer to see the DH yes. in the National League? Yes. When you play interleague games like this. Well, I'd prefer to see it all the time. Period. Well, you would. Yes. No. No I question. I would too. Yes. Yeah. See, I, I didn't. Matt, I think I knew that you would. I, Mike, I didn't think. I didn't think you would want to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like consistency. I mean, I, I, I'm an old school guy. I mean, I like the whole uh, uh, it's game that evolves around whether to bunt or not to bunt, and the art of that yeah. part of the game, doing those little things like that, sacrificing and um, managing a game, managing the roster for, for a manager in the National League is much tougher than the American League managers, what they have to go through in a game. Um, just a you know, when you see uh, great hitters like a Tommy or, or somebody like that, if uh, let's you know, let's just say Tommy. In fact, you know, we we may want to pick this up. Uh, yeah, we can pick it up three. again. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing across for Velasquez. He gets an easy inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. The pitcher will bat second when we return. The Phillies up two nothing.
back minor league report. Lehigh Valley defeated Buffalo 3 to 2. Alec Asher up to the AAA level after Adam Morgan was promoted to the big leagues. Eight and two thirds, two hits allowed. Roman Quinn had two hits, including a double and a loss to Portland for the Reading Fightins. Reese Hoskins continues his hot heat hitting, by the way, for the Reading Fightins. We spin to Lakewood where they defeated Greenville 10 7. Wilson Garcia, three hits, two RBIs, and a run scored. Cesar Hernandez will lead it off, and he takes high. It's one ball and no strikes. It'll be Hernandez, Velasquez, the pitcher, and then Peter Borges. How about Alec Asher? That's his longest outing in his professional career. Oh, is it really? Yep. He's been pitching well this year. Double A and now triple A. Guy who was obviously in the big leagues last year. I like the stuff I saw coming out of his hand. I didn't like the stuff that I saw with two strikes. He didn't have a put away pitch. That's the only thing I'd like to see him work on. On the outside corner, it's two and one to Cesar. Lehigh Valley was rained out today. They'll have a day night doubleheader later on this year against Buffalo. The Bison. Off the end of the bat, two and two. All right, so the pitcher's up next. If you had your druthers, somebody else would be up next <laughs> if this was an interleague game. But you're also saying that you wouldn't mind the DH in all the time. Not just in these interleague games, in the National League. Right, right. I'd like to see the consistency across baseball. And if you're going to have it in, in the American League, if a lot of great stars over the year have come through a designated hitter position. And Ortiz, uh, Tommy, uh, just to mention two. Edgar uh, Martinez. They, they, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yep. But if they came into Philly to play the Phillies, these fans right here want to see, uh, say, Jim Tomey face uh, uh, Vince Velasquez. They want to see Jim Tomey face uh, uh, Cliff Lee. Uh, and, and because that the other team is forced to uh, have the pitcher hit, they don't see that. All right, now let me ask you when you played and they moved, the American League went to the DA, did you want it in the National League even then, you think? No, I mean, I think when I played, uh, I guess, how old was the DH when I played? It had been in 72, I think, was one of them. Maybe 10 years, you know, to the middle of my career. Yeah. Uh, I don't think players like Edgar Martinez were that established at, at that point, where guys are future Hall of Famers uh, because of the DH. Foul, and it's 0 and 1 to Velasquez. And I'll give you my thoughts real quick. Is that one? I want to see more offense. I want to see players excuse me, have a chance to hang around the, the big leagues a little longer. And two, Charlie Morton would be pitching right now if it wasn't because of the pitchers hitting. Uh, that's a good point. If you're going to do the takeout slide on second base and you're going to protect your catchers, why not protect your pitchers? Not have to be on the base. The bases, and you know, you're strictly a pitcher, and no one's going to get hurt because they're running the dang bases, or they're getting hit by a pitch, or like Eikhoff breaking the thumb in spring training. You let them hit. Yeah, Ex you excellent don't point. allow them to hit. in one strike is Velasquez who walked his first time up and scored. Third baseman Ramirez is in. Guess who would have played longer if, if DH was in the National League? Me. You. <laughs> Chopper back towards second. Kipnis flips to second for one and over to first in time. That's a sharp double play. That had to happen quickly around the second base bag in order to turn it 4 6 3. That was a good double play. It took a nice sidearm uh, 
reverse flip uh, by Kipnis. You see it right here. Uh, in fact, it was kind of a long flip. A couple high chops and booms. That's a long flip to be a backhand. But of course, uh, Velasquez, pitcher running, coming out of the right side in the batter's box made it a little easier. So Borges is now up. He singled and scored his first time. I see Peter have a good day. Yeah, you know, Matt, his new stance, people will watch him right here, and it's a great angle right there. He starts now with a bat on his shoulder and gets a little separation right there. See how he puts his bat back. Grounds to third. I was just going to say it's 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 difficult to concentrate on a on a hitting fundamental and at the same time concentrate on good pitch selection. It's, it's a know. tough game. It's a tough game. We'll go to the top of the six. Phillies up two nothing over the Indians. Philly of the week has enjoyed the first month of the 2016 season. Michael's bat is connected with consistency and done so with eye opening power as expected when he arrived at the major league level. In addition to the bat the glove has been quite impressive itself over at the hot corner. Quick on his feet Franco rarely lets a ball get by and he can make throws from wherever he lands. And his early season performance is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, it's a Mother's Day celebration, and Phoebe has made it into Philadelphia. <laughs> Here's Kipnis, and he'll take a strike. It's 0 and 1. Kipnis so far is 0 for 2, a double play and a strikeout. Off speed pitch, and it's one ball, one strike. Kipnis has hit his nine straight games. about batting styles and how different everybody's batting style is uh, his batting style becomes normal but starts out a little different with the way his hands are like, like, like that there was a point where he stayed that way for a lot longer I think the last year really or so good, he's evolved I think he's got a really good looking approach a uh, little Murphy kind of Daniel Murphy like uh, nice and quiet uh, Body, you know, short stride, short quick stroke. There's the high fastball ask. Where's that? Ooh. Two balls and two strikes. Not a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about how he does that bat. I think it's because he wants that chin on that front shoulder. That's what he does is he brings that bat back as far as he can 
he locks that chin on top of his shoulder. So that's his trigger. And that's his trigger. Now all of a sudden his hands come back up and he thinks about keeping that head on the shoulder. Matt Williams in San Francisco back in the day used to lick his shoulder. He would take a pitch and he would lick his shoulder to make sure that his chin stayed on his shoulder. <laughs> Oh, it worked for him. Yeah, I guess it did. And for our young hitters out there listening to what Matt just said, remember when you're, you know, thinking about that, make sure both eyes can see the pitcher. A lot of times we get, we get turned in so much toward the catcher, we don't even realize it, but our back eye is not picking up the pitcher. You're only seeing the pitch, seeing the wind up in the pitch with your front eye. You know, and, and it's funny that you said that because when I first started playing pro ball, I had a club stance, and I was basically showing numbers to the pitcher, looking at the pitcher with the one eye, with with my right eye. Hopefully, it was your dominant eye. We'll never know. We'll, we'll never, never know. know. <laughs> so then, all of a sudden, I realized I opened up my stance, and next thing you know, I was seeing the ball, seeing the pitcher with both eyes, and made it a lot easier. Two balls and two strikes to Kipnis. Fouls it back to the screen. Now that's the high fastball that no one has been able to uh, put in play with any authority. Yeah. But you know, Kipnis is swinging at a little bit differently. You know, he's swinging with a nice, short, compact kind of a you know, I want to say, downward swing, keeping his hands up. Well, these last two pitches have been 94, and he has been able to foul them off. But, but also though he, he doesn't change his swing. Some guys change their swings going after a higher fastball. He has a nice easy very pretty swing going through the zone. You know, the guys that try to gear up and try to hit that fastball that high elevated fastball are the guys that striking out. Well this is a uh, seven foul balls for Kipnis. See now that's one that one right there most guys will miss. Oh absolutely. That's almost above the uh, the Indian label on the chest. I don't know how he got a piece of well, it. I, I don't I don't think he really thinks he can hit it. I think he's trying to foul it off. I mean I think he wishes he wouldn't have swung at it but he's saying to himself you know I can't lay off this thing but if I'm going to swing at it I'm going to chop it. I'm going to chop at it and stay stay alive. Well they may have to get bullpen action just because of this at bat. This is the 12th pitch of this at bat coming to start the top of the sixth inning. In the dirt, three and two. Look at BP fastball, let him roll over to second. They're starting to stir out there in the bullpen. Yes, they are. Thirteen pitches in this inning, but it's been a one batter. This will be the fourteenth pitch of this at bat. Fly ball, left field. Darren Ruff comes running in. He says he has it. So uh, that's one away. Time now for the Jeep Stuff the Fans Trivia Quiz answer. All right, guys, here we go. Who are the only two Indians to hit 50 or more home runs in one season? Mike, I want to congratulate you because I think you did get the answer correct. Yeah, I didn't think I was right. Um, well, I mean, I'll go with uh, boy Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey's correct. That's one. 52 in 2002. Matt. Albert Bell, the year he hit 50 50, 50 home runs, 50 doubles. Albert Bell is correct. He had 50 doubles that year. I forgot about yep. that. 95. Both disciples of Charlie, Charlie Manuel. Charlie Manuel. <laughs> Tom Hamilton, who is the longtime radio broadcaster for the Cleveland Indians, uh, was talking about Charlie's days as the skipper of the Indians. And we thought we did a good Charlie Manuel impersonation, which a lot of people in Philadelphia do. You got to hear his impersonation of Charlie Emanuel. It's right on. Really. Charlie can. Yeah, a lot of people can do Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and one strike. 
if you, if you spend spring training with Charlie for for a month and locker in next to him you, you can you can bet your life you have yes, a chance to learn to do it. That man can talk. He can talk hitting. He uh, he was well liked by the folks who just like here well liked by the folks who covered him every day for the Indians. Two balls, two strikes to Francisco Lindor. It's like fastball way is what they settled on. Got him. They got him looking at 96 miles an hour. That's six strikeouts. W.B. Mason offers the brands you like, like swing lines, huge selection of laminators and shredders. Whether you're preserving your best work or safely destroying your most confidential documents, swing line and W.B. Mason deliver a cut above the rest. Who but W.B. Mason? We're in the middle of the sixth inning and we're firing it at 95. Still, yeah. man. <laughs> best pitch of the day right there. What, 96? Corner. Tries to follow it up with a similar pitch. There's Colton Murray who's warming up in the bullpen. Pitched in last night's ball game. Good Down the up. right field line, he had him way out front. Cesar Hernandez in foul territory makes the catch. Now the side is retired. So nine in a row retired by Vince Velasquez. His day may be done as weekends with Schmidt rolls on presented by Acme. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Buy McDonald's. Jumpstart your morning with a hot or iced McCafe coffee. Now starting at just one dollar. And buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Cesar Hernandez and Andres Blanco going over uh, something in the dugout. Andres is always talking. as a mentor to a lot of the younger players the younger Latin players. I love that I love to see it more. Today's game I don't think players exchange. Information enough. Yeah because there's uh, there's certain things Matt was always good at this. You know as he was watching a game before going into pinch hit you, he, you can see things. That maybe some other guys can't see. When you're sitting on the bench or going back and watching video. Well, they always say you, you, the best hitting coaches is your teammates. To get a chance to watch you all the time, especially guys that don't play a lot. You know, 
Why he sits there and watches his game? He's a student of the game. He watches it, studies it, picks things up, and he lets people know. Dubal whacks it out toward left center field, and Aquin is under it. He'll make the catch, one away. And Freddie Galvis is coming up. Murray's continuing to throw in the bullpen for the Phils. So the thought is, is that uh, actually that's David Hernandez who's now throwing in the bullpen. So the thought is, is that. Velasquez is done after retiring nine straight and is over 100 pitches. You know, uh, back to that other uh, subject we were just talking about. Uh, I think I think our our group of uh, Latin players, Latin position players, they a nice fraternity. They they, they hang really together. Do. They yeah. uh, are very good friends. Uh, you know, Blanco and Hernandez, Freddie, Mikhail. We'll kind of lock her near each other, and I think they do exchange a lot of information. Uh, and, and, and we'll ask is, each other, you know, what do you think yeah. I'm doing wrong? Uh, I don't think uh, that, you know, the the American born players are that apt to do that. And Carlos is also a big part of that as well, Ruiz. Yes, definitely. 0 2 is fouled. It hits Larry Van over the home plate umpire, remains two strikes. He's kind of like the godfather. Yeah. <laughs> Two pitch to Galvis, and he chops it foul. Two strikes to Galvis. And he's down looking on strikes. So two outs. Seven strikeouts for Salazar. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices and includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Yeah, that ball was very, very hittable to left field and up to middle, but borderline high. I know Freddie thought he took it high. I have to admit, watching it live from up above, it looked like a good pitch. Watching the replay, it looked like it was what, how you described it, Mike. It was up and away. Up and away. It's because a backdoor slider is never a strike. Freddie kind of squats down. You see how he's standing right now. Uh, but it did cross right around the Phillies, right around his letters. High bouncer over to third. Uh, the side is retired. Phillies go down one, two, three in their half of the sixth inning. Six of the books will go to the seventh. Phillies lead it 2 nothing over the Indians.
Time now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary. Well, both young pitchers have done a nice job here this afternoon. Vince Velasquez is done after six innings and six strikeouts. He allowed two hits. He'll take a 2 0 lead, or his team will, into the top of the seventh inning. Freddie Galvis is an RBI single today. The other run scored on a box. So we've got a double switch. Andres Blanco comes on to play third, and David Hernandez is the new pitcher. Hernandez, one and one, with an ERA of 3.97. I think this is just a double switch. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with Michael. You know, Pete has been sort of. Uh, Work it around an overused bullpen. Now, not overused in a bad way, just the Phillies have, have gone deep into their bullpen with some extra inning games and some tight ball games. One ball and one strike to Jan Gomes. It'll be Gomes, Naquin, and Davis. Fly ball, right center field. Odubel Herrera makes the catch. Here's Mike you, you kind of find it interesting that the top of the fourth inning, at right, the bottom of the bottom of the third, you had to slip on the mound for the block. Then all of a sudden, you had a little bit of problems with the mound. Walk two guys. All of a sudden, you fix the mound, and both pitchers lock it in. Then. Yeah, nine in a row for Velasquez. It's pretty darn good. Nine in a row since the those two walks. Yep. Here's Tyler Naquin. Naquin is one for two, an infield hit and a strikeout. And a foul ball, and it's 0 and 1. Two strikes to make win. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, they've gone final in New York. The Giants have defeated the Mets six to one. Madison Bumgarner, he gets the win. He's three and two. They beat Syndergaard, who falls to two and one. Syndergaard had gone 30 and a third without allowing a home run, but he gave up a home run to Hunter Pence, a two-run shot. Bumgarner. People were asking him about his velocity being down. And there's a strikeout. He went upstairs. Second time he, they've gotten him upstairs. Two outs. They asked him about his velocity being down. He goes, Who cares? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Another elevated fastball. Scouting report is two strikes elevate. He will chase. Now the Phillies bullpen have not allowed a run over the last 18 innings since the seventh inning on the 24th of April. It's at 18 and two thirds right now. That ball is fouled back by Davis. And it's 0 and 1. This job just firing strikes here by David Hernandez. When you watch uh, Velasquez pitch and Hernandez pitch, it doesn't look like Hernandez is throwing as hard, does it? You look at that scoreboard, it keeps saying 94 95. Yep. Line drive over oh, the glove of Cesar Hernandez in the center field. That's just the third hit of the day for the Indians. Boy, Cesar got up there and they just missed pulling that one in. He did. That guy went down and got that. It was an 0 2 pitch, right? Wow. Just out of the reach. Boy, really close. Got the nice flex on the legs as he was up in the air and, <laughs> and stuck the landing. 
There's Chisenhall who's 0 for 2. He's slide out and he is struck out. Marlon Bird is out of the on deck circle to pinch hit for the pitcher's spot. There's Marlon. Davis is the the biggest base stealing threat that the Indians have. He's one of the biggest ones in the American League. He has seven stolen bases. Jeff Manship, who pitched in Game One, is warming in the pen for the Indians. No balls in one strike. And, you know, and Davis is the biggest threat on the team to steal a base. But so what? Now you're up by two. I'd rather see Hernandez concentrate on getting the hitter at home plate. And not worrying about the runner at first base. But those may be called from the dugout. First one wasn't. Oh, just missed getting it. Unless you pick him off, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you pick him off, yeah, go oh. ahead. But. <laughs> he oh, got he's, him. Out. he's out. He's out. Yeah, he's out. Get him on the sleeve. Yep, they're going to challenge it. I mean, really? he just barely yeah. got him. Pete McCannon wants it challenged. And I'll tell you what, that but, won't sit well with uh, Terry Frank. Oh, no, and he's out by a pretty good margin, if that's correct, if that video is correct. And we all know the video doesn't lie. And, and like I said, my, my point being, if you know you can pick the guy off, go ahead and throw over. Don't yeah. worry about the hitter. <laughs> right there, you can see the tag. Yeah. His hand is not touching the bag yet. Do you think he nipped him? Oh, I think absolutely. he did. The shirt, I, moved. the shirt moved. This should be a quick review. That's good timing. <laughs> Sure was. David Hernandez says, I'll show you, Matt Stairs. Watch it again. See, there it's not as conclusive. He's taking his helmet off at first base. Yeah, it's not. The, the last one we just showed you is not as conclusive. The close up that we showed you is, a, is more conclusive that he got this the sleeve. Alfonso Marquez is to oh, your left. Larry yeah. Vanover is to your right. I do not know if there's. What's the thing? We have to wait and see if there's evidence if there's there. Conclusive. Right? This is the one right here. Look, ready, right there. Shirt moves. Little indentation of the glove. This now this one uh, not, not so much as clear. Would you rather have replays like we're having now, or would you rather have arguments well, with managers? <laughs> There are no you, you mentioned it before there are no no arguments anymore. And when they are they're sort of forced arguments. Here we go. We think. He is out. All right. And that is why you worry about runners at first base. That's exactly right. You limit the pitch count for an inning. No runs one hit and nobody left. Time to stretch here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies lead it by two.
Mark. Jenna McBreen singing God Bless America as the Phils get a chance to bat with a 2 0 lead here in the home seventh inning. David Hernandez, a clean seventh inning. All right, let's look at this pickoff one more time. Matt, what happened here for Rajay well, Davis? Watch how he gets off late quick. He's and all of a sudden he's bouncing around and he's jumping around, jumping around. Next thing you know, he's got a 12 to 13 foot lead. And I don't know if it was if he was sitting there talking or what it was, but before he got set, he was bouncing around and he went out too far. You know, Ryan Howard with a nice take. I'd like to see Ryan back up a little bit closer to the bag with his feet, but it's a very nice play though. Larry knew though. Larry knew he was out. <laughs> you know, and, and I still believe with the point I was making was yes, he's going to steal a base. Yes, you want to try to keep him close, but I'd rather see you concentrate with a two run lead. Now, a one run lead, of course, you want to, you know, really keep him close to first base, but a two run lead, I'd rather see you just concentrate on getting the hitter. Unless you have a very quick move, I guess. Well, he was fighting it over there. He threw over a few times. Replay challenges so far um, this season. The Phillies have challenged 10 times. Five of those challenges have been overturned. So a percentage that's just below what their all time number is. But that's a cardinal sin for Davis, right? Oh, it sure is. Picked off down two to nothing with a left hander hitting. Absolutely. Well, particularly when yeah, I mean you are as we said the best base stealer probably the best base runner on the roster for the Indians. So maybe not the smartest. Well that could be it. At least for now he's not. So Howard will lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning Salazar stays in. Salazar seven strikeouts he's at ninety three pitches so his number is he's pretty comfortable still. I think we've watched today why left handers struggle against him. And it's because of that split that he throws. And obviously his fastball too. But lefties came in hitting just 106, and that's not going to change much with today's efforts. Galvis has a hit. Well, he's got a wide spread right between his uh the strike one pitch was like a little slow slurve or something like that. And then uh, the 94, 93, 94, 95. And that nasty split might be coming up here pretty soon. One ball and two strikes to Howard. Strikeout number eight for Salazar, and he's gotten Howard three times. So one away here in the seventh. Camera and Rupp's coming up. It's time now for our cold hard fact, and we're going to bring in Murph to let us know what that is. All right, thank you very much, Tom. It's brought to you by Coors Light, clean, crisp Coors Light, and it's the longest active win streaks in baseball. Now coming into today, the Mets were atop of that. They had eight straight wins. However, they lost already this afternoon. So now you're looking at the current active win streak, uh, win streak people, and the Marlins. They are currently losing 11 to five. The Pirates are tied 5-5 in the tenth. There you see the Phils with five. So. If things uh, continue the way they're happening right now, Phils could have the longest active winning streak in baseball after this one is over, guys. Well, after finishing uh, April with 14 wins in 24 games, uh, they're trying to get May off on a right on the right note. As you look at the uh, scores around Major League Baseball, so much for Washington having a, a tough schedule on the road coming up. I mean, the toughest part of it so far is the three or the three against the Phillies. They're about to close out the the Cardinals winning today leading today six nothing. Oh and one the camera interrupt. And a line drive base hit in the center field. Oh his mom's here he might as well get a hit right. Yeah that was for mom for sure. This is pop Kevin. Look at that. You don't, you don't think even at that at, at Cameron's age that it still does it. Your dad is not involved and engaged in everything you do when you're a ball player. 
Now he's a former ball player himself, so. That was a nice stroke right there, Matt. Straight up, 0 1 pitch. Made a nice adjustment from that first pitch. Had been pulling off the ball a little bit the last few at bats. Aaron Ruff <laughs> takes a strike. It's 0 1. All right, it's better to be outside now that he's on base. Dad's <laughs> got some nice long white hair. That's what I'm trying to get. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm trying to. Next year, that's going to be me. That long, huh? Yeah. Ponytail. Going oh two. Matt and I do wish we could have the same conversation. I know you're going to let it grow out, Matt. I know. <laughs> oh and two. Ground ball to third. It might be two. And it will be. 5 4 3 around the horn. The side is retired here in the bottom of the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We'll go to the eighth inning. The Phil's still nursing a two run lead. is brought to you by your local Ford stores by Jefferson call 800 Jeff now or visit Jefferson.edu and by Xfinity Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV Two nothing Phillies on top as we move to the top half of the eighth inning time now for a Hyundai defensive play of the game Darren Ruff Oh, this could be a game saver at this point. Yeah, it was a very good jump. Very good read. Realize it's going to be a low line drive. It's all about the first step concentration. Eyes open, makes the catch. Eyes closed. Eyes closed, and <laughs> in comes the landing. So, very nice play in that situation. <laughs> Great play. That's your Hyundai defensive play of the game. Brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. If things stay the same, it definitely, <laughs> definitely saved the game. Here's Lonnie Chisinau to face Hernandez, who threw 12 pitches oh. in the. His one inning of work. He was up when Rajay Davis was picked off first. 0 for 2. He's flied out and struck out. Bird is back on deck as a pinch hitter. Hernandez just seems to be way stronger now than he was in spring training. I mean, his velocity, I mean, I know, I know it's two miles an hour, but there's just a sort of a crispness to it. And yeah, he's. Two miles an hour is what, eight? eight. <laughs> I have no idea, but my guess is two miles an hour is like what six, eight inches. But it, but his strikes he's around the strike zone more, you know, not down the middle of the plate, but just around the strike zone. There's Hector Neris. Yes. That is Matt's player of the month. Hector Neris. I wonder uh, if he's warming now. If he's warming to come in in the middle of the inning. Well, it's a fact that he's throwing 95. Well, watch the movement. I mean that's straight down late movement. Yeah. Good action. Which is an all fouls it toward the Hall of Fame club. Oh. 
There were some folks that had a chance to grab it. They did everything they could. You did everything you could. You really did. Can you imagine how bad that would hurt your hand in a cold day like this? She had to reach down. Oh, it was not it was not as easy of a play as you're going to find. Two and two. Well, Hector's not warming up like he's coming in to close the game next inning. He's kind of maybe I don't know maybe getting ready in case they need a strikeout or something with that splitter. I, I, I don't know, but he's, he's moving pretty fast down there. Cesar Hernandez in shallow right field, and he will not be able to throw Chisinau out. The ball gets Whoa. away from Howard, and it's going to roll around, and Chisinau will get to second base. Well, the, there will be an error charge to Cesar. And yeah, we're gonna, they're going to score two errors. E4 to allow him to be safe at first. E4 to allow him to go from first to second. Right there is error number one. Yeah, he kind of got caught in between. So between Hop and Ryan was uh, at first base, really not in position to kind of knock that throw down. Darren was backing up, but it got by him. Yeah, once it hit the railing, it sort of rolled behind home plate. Well, Matt, here's your with the point you were making earlier. Man on second base, nobody out. He may he means nothing, right? Absolutely. Just pretend he's not even out there. Yeah. You don't even need to hold him on, Cesar. Get back so you can keep the ball in the infield so you can get an out. That's a good point. I'm not sure why Cesar's playing so close to second. He's holding on tight, then as right. he delivery, he backs up, which means you're not in a set position to play defense. And he is not going to steal, especially after a guy getting picked off last night. Larry, tell him to get back at his position. <laughs> One ball and one strike to Marlon Bird. Bird played or started the game one of this series. Fouls it away. It's Bird, one and two. Bird will hit a ground ball over there too. You know, I mean, he, uh, he hit one left at a shortstop. Uh, opening night here with the Indians. Opening night, he started in right field. He doubled his first time up. And then ground it out to second his second time up. One ball and two strikes to Bird. Lays off and it's two and two. Got him. Good spot is right. Second strikeout for Hernandez. Big strikeout. Reminder that the Phillies Festival is just around the corner. It'll take place on Thursday, June 9th. Autographs from the 2016 players and coaches. Plus, the Fanatic is going to have his own photo booth. The Phillies have raised $16 million since the, the relationship with the ALS, ALS Association Greater Philadelphia chapter began 32 years ago. Tickets can be purchased uh, by calling 215 463 1000 or by going to Phillies.com. Jose Ramirez, the batter. Ramirez is 0 for 1 with two walks. Over to third base. Blanco's got it. Looks the runner back to second. Two outs. That was some kindling. You could hear that bat shattering. <laughs> you know, again, we talk about the velocity, but it's some movement. Thinking it's going to be a fastball out of third, stay up in the zone. That ball drops off the table and getting some weak ground balls. Hmm. I mean, that was right off the end. Oh, 
Well, Cesar's down at second base right now. I know what he's thinking. <laughs> One more One out. More out One baby. more out. <laughs> Those were the first two errors that Cesar's made this year. By the way, this is a tough out, too. That last 12 pitch at bat, right? That's right. That uh, 13, 14. Was it 14 total? Yeah, you got him on his 14th pitch. 14th pitch, but that basically meant that Velasquez wasn't going to pitch past the sixth inning. He did well, though, through the six. Now a meeting out of the mound with a count two balls and no strikes. Velasquez with his six innings uh, today is the only pitcher in baseball to have three starts this season with at least six innings no runs and three or fewer hits allowed. Forget about even the strikeouts. Two balls and no strikes. Two and one. Well, you get this last out, it's even bigger because then you can have Naris be the closer. With Gomez probably not available today. Look. Person tried to catch that <laughs> ball with the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> They wow. tried to catch it with the yeah. umbrella. <laughs> you ever seen something make people any happier than a than a baseball? Oh, it made huh? the whole section happy. Probably because he tried to catch it with an umbrella. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 pitch coming to Kipnis. Fly ball, left center field. Darren Ruff and O'Double are both there. It's Ruff who makes the call, and the inning is over. And Cesar says, thank you very much. No runs, no hits, two errors, and an umbrella. That's not going to work. But at least it was there for you to pick up when it stopped rolling. <laughs>the Eagles did in this year's draft you can get a total draft recap with analysis of CSN experts Derek Gunn and Ruben Frank on quick slants Monday at 6 only on Comcast Sportsnet 2 nothing Phillies as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning <laughs> that young man is uh, trying to dance along with the music being played here at the ballpark Jeff Manship will take over in the bottom of the eighth inning This is the ninth game for Manship. Cesar Hernandez will lead it off. Cesar and then Andres Blanco and Peter Borges. Bottom third of the Phillies order. Manship fields that one. And 
one away. Jeff Manship is a Golden Domer. He's out of Notre Dame. Part of the Phillies roster a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's a dumb question. Back on that double switch subject. Yeah. What would be the difference if he didn't make the double switch and we needed a pinch hitter now for the pitcher? I think Andres would pinch hit. But you'd still have Franco in the game, right? You'd still have Franco in the game. Yeah, I, it's one of those we always say that we have to ask the manager. I, it's like last night. I mean, there were certain things that on the double switch, there was a reason. Pete said a lot, all that had to do with the bullpen, how he was no, trying well, to. Yeah, I was assuming Franco had not have a, you know, a ah. small injury or something, the reason he took him out. Yeah. The, uh, but yes, it, you could have done the same thing. You could have Andres pitch hit here and kept Franco in the game. Maybe that's why. Scott, deep to right field, going back is Chisholm Hall. It is up the top of the wall, and it dies on the warning track. Blanco is around second. He's thinking three. Lindor's throw to third on one hop. He is safe. He got his hand in there. Uh, uh, uh. Must have been a great slide. I love watching the umpires rotate too and how yeah. over went up the third base line and got a position to make that call. Yeah, that was nice work. They're looking at it. See if they want to replay it. Brad Mills, the former Phillies coach, now the bench coach for Terry Francona. I thought he'd that shut block. it down right there. No, he makes the decision to go with one out. He's safe. Yeah, he got it in there. I find it hard to believe that they would relay that throw. He would one hop that throw to third base where he was from where he got that ball. Do you think it was because he was rushing to do it? Maybe possibly possibly. All right. So with one man down. Blanco's at third. Borges is up. Billy's lead it by two. Big Look, run. Yeah. Looking for a little insurance. Pitch up first pitch. And here comes the squeeze. They've got Blanco caught. Boy Matt you saw that right away and Blanco is tagged out. You saw that before it even happens. You just assuming oh, right, that's yeah, what was going to happen. The sign? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because he, I thought he sold it early. The pitch out that is. Yeah, he did. I mean, it was one of those things where. Two five three, by the way, on the put out. Nice play by the first baseman getting in there to back yep. up that rundown. Or just fouls it over the screen. It's no balls and two strikes. They say that Borges did offer at the pitch out. The only thing he could have done different was throw the bat. <laughs> You're not expecting a pitch out though. Yeah, yeah, you got to try. That one's looped out to right center field. And Chisholm Hall is able to close and make the catch, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We're going to head to the ninth inning. The Phils are looking for their second straight series sweep.
Indians as we head to the top of the ninth. Phil's looking for their second straight series sweep. They're going to try and close it out here in the top of the ninth when it's all said and done. It's back on the road for the Phil's and it all starts with four games in St. Louis starting tomorrow. Here's the starting matchup. Jeremy Hellickson versus Adam Wainwright in game number one tomorrow night. And it'll be Aaron Nola on Tuesday taking on Michael Waka. On Wednesday, Adam Morgan takes the baseball for the Phil's against Mike Leake. And a Thursday afternoon game in St. Louis, Jared Eikhoff and Jaime Garcia. But guys, as we know, this one's not over yet. No, uh, Murph, they're going to turn it over to Hector Neris to try to close this one out here in the ninth inning. Jim Mark Gomez not available today to close. Hector's been very good. Pete has said he thinks that Hector can be a closer at some point. Well, he's going to get a chance right here. 23 strikeouts and 14 in the third. And he'll face uh, Lindor, Santana, and Gomes. The Phillies try to win their sixth consecutive game back to back series sweeps. First pitch outside, one ball and no strikes. So another fastball right down the middle. Is he taken? Yes. 2 and 0. He's taken 2 and 0. He's taken 3 and 1. 3 and 0. He's throwing it up there 93. That's it. Two balls and two strikes. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire, the opposition one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Got him through that split with the count two and two. One away here in the ninth inning. Oh no, they're going to say he fouled it. Oh, I didn't think he fouled it. I don't think Hector thought he fouled it. He was already writing K down in my book. Can you replay that? You cannot. He can get help. He did not foul that. No, it look like it. You can get help. Larry Vanover can ask for help, but very rarely do they do that. I didn't see it change direction. No, I didn't. I, I think they got that one incorrect. Over to first. That's a foul ball. It goes back to the same conversation. I think we had this in Washington. Yes, it was in Washington. Why don't they just add this to replay? I mean, you can see it now with all the slow mo and the camera angles. Most times, just like every other play, there would be conclusive or non conclusive, you know, there would be conclusive evidence to, to see it. Two balls and two strikes to Lindor. Popped him up. Well, it's not as cool as a strikeout, but it's still an out here in the ninth inning. <laughs> I think that's going to be an area where they want to stay away from having replay with balls and strikes at all. That's an excellent any, point on your part. Any, anything to round yeah. home plate. It's an excellent point. Pitch inside, one ball and no strikes to Carlos Santana. Santana is 0 for 2. He's lined out, he's walked, and he's popped out. Same approach, right down the middle. It's back to back split finger fastballs. You're down by two, you need base runners. Solo home run, so what? He's going to take a strike. Totally different. One run, two runs, and three runs. One run, you're being aggressive. Two run, you're taking a strike. If you're down by three in a safe situation, you still take the same approach and you go you hit. You don't have to take pitches. 
fly ball right field. Board just going back toward the scoreboard, and it is gone. Solo home run for Carlos Santana. It's only the second home run allowed by Hector Neris this year, and it's now a 2 1 ball game. I gotta stop talking about these home runs. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful swing. Picked up by Steve Carlton jersey. Yep. Now your approach changes as a hitter and as a pitcher. Now your hitters get a little aggressive. They they wouldn't jump over that first pitch. They're thinking about something trying to drive a home run. Now all of a sudden that split finger is good now. Well, it looks like he is what he's going to throw, and it is, and it's one ball and no strikes. John Gomes has flied out to center and he's popped out. And there's a line drive to left field. David Lowe makes the sliding grab. That ball was rocking. Wow. They've hit some balls hard. Last two nights, actually, hit ball hard a lot last night. That was probably the hardest ball I hit of the, of the series. No question. That ball was crushed. We need to be glad that thing didn't get a little more height on it. <laughs> Elevation. David Lowe makes the play. He came in for defense to take over for Darren Ruff in a double switch. And now it's Tyler Naquin who is single today, but he struck out the last two times. On elevated fastballs. So now does Naris go away from throwing the split finger or does he elevate the fastball? Looks like. Oof. Oh, Elevated to hang and split. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one. Now they want it up, whatever it was. He lays off. It's one ball, one strike. That has been a zone that they've been able to get Naquin the last yeah. two times with two strikes. He wanted to go after that one as well. It was just off the plate a little too much. Good pitch. One ball and two strikes. Phillies are one strike away from sweeping out the Indians and make it six in a row. 23,000 plus on their feet. Yep, this team has been entertaining to watch this first month of the season. They may not be erupting offensively, but. They are in the wind column. The one two pitch in the dirt, two and two. Bullpen scoreless streak ended at 20. And if you want to tack on the out in the ninth, 20 and a third, but 20 officially. Two balls and two strikes. Swing and a miss. He got it with the split. And the Phillies have swept out the Cleveland Indians. They've won six consecutive games. They win it today by a final score of two to one. And for the Indians, that's six straight one run losses. That's an incredible run. First career save for Hector Neris. He was relieving Jenmar Gomez today who had the day off and look what the Phillies bullpen did this series. There are Chevrolet players of the of the weekends 12 innings six hits one earned run and 15 strikeouts in this weekend series. It's the first six game winning streak for the Phillies since May of last year and their first back to back series sweep since September of 2012. And yes, you can enjoy this. It's 15 wins and 10 losses. So does that mean Murph gets to interview all of the uh, the uh, pitchers in the bullpen? Yeah, get them all out there. Here's our <laughs> WB <laughs> deliveries of the game. Back in the third inning, Freddie Galvis's uh, RBI single. Yeah, it's a very nice job right yeah. there, getting the base up the middle. After a walk, a 
after an 0-2, he and wants to score. And all of a sudden, the same thing with third inning. You get the little whoop. There goes the foot. Doesn't throw the ball. Gets the second run coming across due to the ball after Peter Ford just had a very good at bat, hitting a line drive to the left field. Those are your WB Mason deliveries of the game. And now Hector Neris with his first career save is down the field with our own Greg Murphy. Murphy. All right, thank you very much. Yes, first career save for Hector Neris. Uh, any different getting ready for the ninth inning as opposed to maybe the seventh or the eighth? Uh, I say Jesus first, thank you, and Pete, thank you for giving the opportunity. No matter what, what inning it is, it's the same game. I'm going there for doing my job and doing my whatever you can do for winning my team, you know, for her, my team. This, this is the ninth inning on the first inning. It's the same game for me. And whatever I can put in the game for winning, I'm here. You have been pitching with great confidence this season, and that split finger has been a big part of it. Uh, how much uh, is confidence part of your success right now? For me, is the like uh, the very important point. For Uh, I saw him coming. <laughs> for me, it's the, it's the most important this pitching because it's the pitch I got for taking out the balance to uh, the hitter, you know. And right now, I use uh, a little bit more in the last year, more control, and and I got a good time now for this pitch. We can't say enough about the bullpen and the way the entire bullpen has been pitching. Are you guys kind of feeding off one another, playing off one another? No, well. Look, P is the is the head in the in the team, you know. And when he goes to the bullpen, everybody's ready because everybody's been together. Is the very important point too. The team is together, and the bullpen only got one point. Doing the job in the game and, and saving every inning for making the chance for the team winning. Well, you guys have been getting the job done for sure, Hector. Thanks for your time. We appreciate. It. Go get warm. I know it's chilly. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph. Thank you. We appreciate that. Well, that was excellent by Hector Neris, and there is that split. He's able to get the final out of this series. The Phils sweep out the Indians. They win it 2-1. to one. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this.